Hello there, daredevils! Hold on to your seats, because today we're diving into the action-packed origins of one of the most iconic action heroes, John McClane. You know him as a guy who always seemed to find trouble, even on his day off. But have you ever wondered how this everyday cop became the unstoppable force we love? Well, this episode is just about that. In the scorching summer of 1976, you see John McClane had no intention of becoming an action star that day. He was just trying to make sure nothing went awry on what should have been a routine day. But as fate would have it, McLean stumbled headfirst into a battle against a group of ruthless terrorists, and the world would never be the same. It's a lesser-known tale, a hidden gem in the annals of action hero history that reveals the true reason behind John McLean's heart of steel. Stick around to uncover the thrilling secrets that forged this unforgettable character. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. The Rookie Beginnings Here's a thrilling ride down memory lane to discover just how our favorite hard ass, John McClane, became the unstoppable force we know in those iconic Die Hard films. It's 1976, and New York City is gearing up for the 4th of July festivities. The streets are alive with patriotic zeal, and the air is thick with excitement. But amidst all the flag-waving and fireworks anticipation, our hero-to-be, John McClane, steps onto the scene, ready for action, alongside his training officer, Ken Bingham. They've got a mission, and it's to be the thin blue line between order and chaos in the Big Apple. Now, folks, if you thought this duo was going to be an unstoppable crime-fighting team, well, think again. While John is as alert as a Labrador on a caffeine binge, it turns out Officer Bingham is more interested in catching some Zs than catching crooks. The bustling streets of the city are where pickpocketing is an art form, and the stars of the show are a modern-day Romeo and Juliet of the thieving world. Our hero John, with his eagle eye, sharper than Hawkeye's aim, spots this dynamic duo in action. The lady of the pair, not one for subtlety, decides to showcase her mm, assets to a potential victim couple. And wouldn't you know it, that little peep show turns into a lover's quarrel. It's a classic distraction technique. While the lovebirds are engrossed in their argument over the impromptu performance, the girl's partner in crime swiftly works his magic, swiping valuables from their unsuspecting mark. But John McClane isn't your average bystander, oh no, he's not having any of it. He's seen enough capers to recognize trouble when it's right under his nose. With the speed of the flesh and the determination of a bat on a mission, John darts off to apprehend the pickpocket extraordinaire. And let me tell you, it's a showdown that wouldn't be out of place in WrestleMania ring. John grapples with the would-be thief. After all, John's had his fair share of experience in a game of tough tackle on these busy streets. In the end, justice prevails and our hero emerges victorious proving that even in a world filled with chaos, a simple guy like John can still be the ultimate guardian of law and order. The day must go on. Well, it seems like John McClane's day just keeps getting more interesting by the minute. He's on his second arrest of the day, and just when he's thinking about catching a breather by the pier with good old Officer Bingham, destiny throws him a curveball that even Deadpool would have found intriguing. A stunning, elegant lady, the kind who exudes wealth like Tony Stark after a successful merger, strolls down from a gargantuan yacht at the pier. And let me tell you, that yacht was so massive it could give the Batmobile a run for its money. But here's the kicker, this gorgeous lady, who smells like a million bucks, doesn't spare a glance for Officer Bingham. No, she's locked onto John McClane like a heat-seeking missile. Talk about having a magnetic personality. And who is this mysterious dame? None other than Diana Ford, the wife of the third richest guy on the planet, Walden Ford. She's not here for a casual chat. Folks, oh no, she's got a mission. She invites John aboard their mega yacht, not for a leisurely cruise, mind you, but to ensure the security is as tight as Spider-Man's spandex for tonight's shindig. It's gonna be a soiree to remember, with the city's top brass including the mayor on the guest list. Now let me tell you a little something about our man, John McClane. He's got this knack for finding trouble even when he's trying to play it cool. He didn't have a clue about this highfalutin event, but he decides to roll with it because, well, when a beautiful woman with a yacht the size of a shield helicarrier invites you, you don't say no, right? Little did he know that this evening on the yacht would be one for the record books. As he's chatting it up with Mrs. Ford, his eagle eyes catch a mysterious figure in a trench coat, a real femme fatale blonde. 
pacing past him like a black widow on a mission. And just like that, John's attention is off to the races, tracking this lady through the crowd until she vanishes like the invisible woman. It looks like John's about to embark on an adventure. Trouble may find him, but with his cocky, wise-ass attitude and a dash of curiosity, you can bet it's gonna be one wild ride aboard the Ford Mega Yacht. Caught in the Yacht it looks like our hero, John McClane, just can't catch a break. As he continues his patrol through the lively streets, who should he bump into once more? None other than the beautiful blonde troublemaker, and this time she's up to some shoplifting shenanigans with a t-shirt. Maybe she thought she could use it as a cape for her own 4th of July parade, wearing that skin-tight costume and all. But just as John's about to lay down the law, he hears his name being called out. And it's not just any voice, it's Diana Ford, the high society starlet, and by her side stands the commissioner of the NYPD. Talk about bad timing. With that distraction, our slippery shoplifter slips away, leaving John holding the bag or in this case, the stolen t-shirt. Diana and the commissioner are all business now. They want John in the mix for the evening event aboard the colossal yacht. It seems they've got big plans for him, and resistance is futile. Our wise-cracking hero has no choice but to follow along as they lead him onto the luxurious vessel, while Jerry, the NYPD commissioner, and Walden Ford, the billionaire extraordinaire, are off doing their thing. Diana decides to play tour guide for our unsuspecting hero. It's not every day you get a private tour of a mega yacht from a glamorous socialite, after all. The Black Sheep of the NYPD Further, the pier is about to reveal its darker, grittier side tonight. While John McClane might be rubbing shoulders with NYC's A-listers, there's a shadow lurking in the moonlight that's far from glamorous. Meet Russ Ciardiello and Peter Noonan, the dynamic duo of the NYPD, or so they'd have you believe. But these guys wouldn't know public service if it jumped out of a comic book and smacked them in the face. Respect for law and order? Nah, not in their vocabulary. What they're all about is power, authority, and squeeze every last dime out of the weak and downtrodden. They've got their fingers in more illegal pies than a hungry teenager at a buffet. And tonight, it seems they're cooking up something big. We're not talking pocket change here. We're talking the kind of shady dealings that would make Lex Luthor blush. They rendezvous with a shady character named Alan Douglas, and their hushed conversation takes a dark turn. Turns out they had to do the unthinkable, murder someone named Ira Lewis who up until this morning was part of their twisted conspiracy. But that's not the worst of it. They're also lamenting their failure to eliminate a pesky eyewitness, a beautiful blonde girl in a trench coat. Does that ring a bell? They chased her through the crowd, but it was like trying to catch a ninja on roller skates. She just kept disappearing. As they swap sinister stories, Peter Noonan, sharp as a hawk with laser vision, spots their target, or should we say the eyewitness, the blonde girl, Rosie Haskell. The big conspiracy unfolding. Russ and Peter are on the prowl, hot on the trail for Rosie Haskell, aiming to put a lid on their heinous crime once and for all. But Rosie's no pushover. She's got Spidey Sense level instincts kicking in. As she starts picking up the pace, our crooked cops, Russ and Peter, are stuck in a high-speed game of catch-up while simultaneously playing the blame game for letting Rosie slip away. Just when it seems like Rosie's about to disappear into the night, fate or maybe just plain old yacht congestion intervenes. She collides with one of the wealthy men on board the yacht, bringing her unexpected sprint to a halt. Russ and Peter, with a Cheshire cat grin on their faces, pause in their tracks. It's like they've stumbled upon the final piece of a diabolical puzzle. The looks on their faces practically scream, we've got her right where we want her. But why, you ask? Would they call this big, beautiful boat a trap? Meanwhile, spare a thought for our man, John McLean. After a grueling eight-hour shift and an extra four hours of overtime, all he wanted was a cold shower, a beer, and a front row seat to some fireworks from his own roof. Instead, he's been on his feet for over 12 hours, surrounded by strangers and NYC A-listers, playing a security detail like a real-life superhero. Let the terror begin. Just when he thought he could finally kick back and relax, fate had other plans in store for John as he scanned the scene. Something caught his eye, the beautiful blonde shoplifter. John's eyes practically twinkled with excitement, and just like that, things went from snooze fest to heart-pounding thriller in the blink of an eye. Well, kinda. John took a confident step forward, ready to approach the girl and maybe have a little chat about her shoplifting hobbies. But in a plot twist, a deafening scream shattered the peace. Hands up! A harbor patrol boat pulled up alongside the yacht, and two men in NYPD uniforms leaped aboard. But these weren't your friendly neighborhood cops. 
They were none other than Russ and Peter, armed to the teeth and ready to ruin everyone's evening. They weren't there to serve and protect, they were there to serve themselves, demanding wallets, watches, and anything else of value from the wealthy New Yorkers on deck. But while all this madness unfolded on the upper deck, our man John was down below, playing detective like Sherlock Holmes with a splash of Batman stealth. He was on the hunt, trying to identify these armed men in uniforms, even as the yacht rocked with the turmoil above. Meanwhile, Walden Ford, the host of this ill-fated event, seemed oddly confident that his hired security team would handle the situation. Little did he know that his so-called protectors were in on the whole hijacking scheme. And just when you thought things couldn't get crazier, one of Walden's own security guys stepped forward and delivered a slap that could rival the Hulk's thunderclap. Yep, you guessed it, Walden's security team was part of the whole sinister plot. John McClane enters the action mode. The armed men are now in full-on supervillain mode, executing their nefarious plan with all the precision of a supervillainous team-up. They're herding the yacht's passengers like cattle and causing chaos left and right. As they go about their sinister business, they decide it's a good idea to dispose of the boat's staff by sending them to the great locker in the sky, or in this case, into a cabinet. But here's the twist. That cabinet was already preoccupied, and who's in there, you ask? None other than our hero John McClane and his newfound companion in crime fighting, Rosie. With John as the last line of defense between a boatload of innocent people and total catastrophe, the pressure is on. Rosie finally spills the beans about the gruesome murder she witnessed at the hands of Russ and Pete, and it's clear that John's got to step up his game to sort this mess out. As they huddle in a corner, trying to piece together the puzzle of the evening, they cross paths with one of the terrorists named Abner. And let me tell you, John doesn't waste a second. He goes all Rey Mysterio on the bad guy, delivering a beatdown. The bad guy ends up kissing the floor faster than you can say, pow! But the chaos isn't over yet. Up on the main deck, the final man and possibly the mastermind behind the diabolical plan, Alan Douglas, makes his grand entrance, and he's not coming empty-handed. He's got an evil smile that would put the Joker to shame, and a handgun that would give Punisher's arsenal a run for its money. Alan Douglas, the good guy. The new addition to the terrorist lineup, Alan Douglas, is the puppeteer pulling the strings of this sinister plot, and oh boy, does he have a bone to pick with Walden Ford and his fellow billionaires. He keeps calling them Earth Rapists, accusing them of wrecking the world for their personal gain. Alan once worked for Ford, but there came a day when he realized that Ford's billion dollars weren't any good for him or the world. Alan's partners in crime couldn't care less about his grandiose political or social agenda. They're here for one thing and one thing only, the promise of a payday that'll make Scrooge McDuck's money vault look like pocket change. John McClane, ever the skeptical hero, isn't buying into Alan's high-minded rhetoric. He's convinced that under all the fancy slogans and righteous indignation, it's all about Benjamins for Mr. Douglas. In this pivotal moment, John takes charge like a true leader, advising Rosie to stay out of harm's way and hide from the line of fire. With the finesse of a ninja, John stalks the armed men and collects dynamite bundles they've scattered across the boat like it's an Easter egg hunt. But then, in a twist, Russ is sent by Alan to check on the unconscious Avner, who is apparently not responding to the radio. As Russ investigates the lower decks, Faye throws him a curveball in the form of John McClane. Cue the action-packed showdown, complete with bullets flying like confetti. Lucky for John, Russ is about as good a shot as stormtroopers on a target practice range. After a little hand-to-hand -hand combat, John seizes control, snatches Russ's gun, and shows him why he was a medal winner at the range. Russ goes down like a sack of potatoes, and it's one less bad apple in the NYPD barrel. But Rosie Haskell, our ever-watchful observer, witnesses the whole spectacle up close and personal. She's understandably shocked to see Russ Sierdiello in the flesh and makes a run for it in sheer panic. Unfortunately, she's caught by Peter Noonan, the other corrupt cop in this rogues gallery. And just like that, Rosie is handed over to the puppet master himself, Alan Douglas. John McClane, not just muscles. John McClane is in full-on action hero mode. Bullets are flying, and he's dodging and returning fire like a seasoned pro. It's a real-life action sequence straight out of a summer blockbuster. But just when things are at their most intense, Alan tries to play a little radio chat with our hero. He wants John to surrender, or else Rosie's life hangs in the balance. 
John realizes he's got no choice but to swallow his pride and give in to the bad guys. Alan and Noonan start making their exit, hopping onto a mini submarine that Alan had brought along for the evil ride. They're grinning from ear to ear, thinking they've got it all figured out. Once they're safely away, they plan to blow the billionaire's yacht to the kingdom and come with all that dynamite they've scattered around. You see, while Alan and Noonan were busy hatching their evil escape plan, John had been collecting dynamite like he was shopping for groceries. He dumped a whole sack of it into that mini submarine, and the bad guys didn't have a clue. Before Alan and his henchmen could make a getaway, the mini submarine erupted into a fireworks display. John McClane, always quick on the trigger, opens fire on the terrorists, taking down most of them. But Alan Douglas isn't your run-of-the-mill villain. He's no cream puff, that's for sure. He puts up one heck of a fight, giving McLean a run for his money. But in the end, the good guys prevail because nobody outwits John McLean. And just like that, our man McLean is not only a hero in the eyes of many, including Walden Ford, but he's also earned himself a promotion. Officer John McLean is now Detective John McLean. What more do we have in Die Hard Comics? Another jaw-dropping adventure with the one and only John McClane in the Die Hard comics. While the Big Apple is plunged into darkness during a massive blackout, our hero McClane does what he does best, saving the day with style. With the hostage situation on his hands, John channels his inner action hero to wrap it up in classic McClane fashion. Explosions, one-liners, and hair-raising stunts. You betcha, it's a ride of adrenaline-pumping thrills. As the smoke clears, the real villains behind the blackout emerge from the shadows and their diabolical plans start to unravel. It's not just about flipping the lights off in the city, it's about a high-stakes bank robbery in progress. Enter Detective Olga Cruces, McLean's partner in crime fighting, as they join forces to track down these criminals responsible for the blackout and put a stop to their audacious heist. And speaking of crossovers, let's take a moment to appreciate the evolution of John McLean. From his early days as a Marine, to his humble beginnings as a rookie cop, and now to these action-packed adventures in the Die Hard comics, he's come a long way. He's not just a wise-cracking cop, he's a force of nature, a symbol of resilience, and a true American hero. And we really hope Boom Studios will come up with more issues of this action-packed saga. Marvelous Verdict In the lesser-known pages of the comic books, John McClane's origins reveal a side of his iconic character that often goes unnoticed. Long before he became the indomitable hero of the silver screen, McClane's journey began in the panels of comic books in the early 2000s. These lesser-known tales delve into his early life as a Marine, showcasing the grit and determination that would define him in the years to come. From the rugged training grounds to the battlefield, readers witness the forging of a hero. As a rookie cop in the unforgiving streets of New York City, McLean's character takes shape. These comics offer a glimpse into his humble beginnings, setting the stage for the incredible adventures that would follow. While these comic book origins may not be as widely celebrated as his cinematic escapades, they serve as a reflection to McLean's enduring appeal and complex character. They remind us that heroes can emerge from ordinary beginnings, and John McLean's journey from Marine to NYPD cop is a testament to the human spirit in the face of adversity. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thank you and see you next time.